20 to 7 Tuesday morning. Flight to Amsterdam to meet up with the boss, Paul Bosfeld, ex City player. Um, land at Amsterdam, train to a place called Deventer where he lives. Have a little chat with him there and then uh, it's off to watch him work. And he's currently the academy coach at FC20. I may not know this, but we're using a small camera because Michael, the cameraman, refuses to work serious cameras before 9 o'clock in the morning. Full of fun, great character, honest boy. He's a great professional. Always give him the set on the pitch. I could probably get my big camera out now, but I'm still using the ion. Is it after nine? Oh, it's quarter to ten. Yeah, you should have the last train to Nashville. <laughs> station and turn left and, and followed this crowd and I think they're all students, we've ended up at a university, we're just coming back to the station. <laughs> are, you, are you just outside the station? Is this what you class as an old traditional house in house? Yeah, this is a town... Uh, it's it's from the from the old times, say. When was this built then? 18, uh, 1890. That old? Yeah. Wow. And they all have the high ceilings with the with the design on yeah, the top this, and yeah. the frieze, and it's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful garden too. Uh, f for this close to the city centre, it's uh, quite big. It's, it's hard to get a, a garden, uh, but yeah. we, we like it both. So, go ahead, Eagles was your first professional football club. It's not even, is it a real football club that? Yeah, yeah, it's serious. It's one of the uh, oldest mm -hmm. in Holland. And uh, I, I remember Barry Hughes uh, put Eagles behind it before it was just go ahead. Right. And uh, Barry Hughes was a coach over there and uh, he made it totally uh, go with Eagles. And yeah, it's uh, one of the clubs that still has uh, the old tradition, old stadium, not the uh, new or somewhere between uh, the big shops. No, it's just uh, in the neighborhood, uh, working class neighborhood, and there's the stadium still. So it's a good atmosphere. And then, of course, <coughs> you um, got the massive move to the mighty Feyenoord, and obviously very successful there. First, first 20. First 20? Yeah, yeah. After, After Go Ahead Eagles, you went to 20 first? Yeah, yeah. I right. played uh, six years at uh, Go Ahead Eagles. Then I went to 20 for three years, and then I went to finals for six years. A little bit more than six. Because they were like the team at the time, because I think you won the, <coughs> the league and the UEFA Cup while you yeah. were there as well. And Yeah, they were a little bit more successful than, than the last uh, 14 years, about. And uh, we, we played Champions League at that time, and... Mm -hmm. uh, so it, yeah, at that time they were uh, at the top in Holland, and now they get back a little bit, but not really serious yeah. yet. But yeah, hopefully it's, it's getting back. But, but people like like Van Persie were at Feyenoord when you played, yeah, weren't sure. they? Yeah. Uh, were there any more 
lads who played in that team when you played at Feyenoord that made it to the Premier League? Uh, no, only uh, Van Hooydonk played at uh, Celtic. Yeah. He had a good time over there. And he no, he played at Nottingham, I guess. Mm. Nottingham Forest. Uh, other players, Jesse Dudek went to uh, Liverpool. And mm. uh, other players, Brad Emerton to uh, Millsborough, I guess. No. No. Yeah. No. no Blackburn? Yeah, Blackburn Rovers, yeah. yeah, there he was. I've got something right. Yeah. Um, when you came over to England eventually, how, how would you compare the, the like, well, especially Manchester City to the the Dutch league that you've been used to and playing in for so long? Yeah, for me, it was a big adventure because I played uh, yeah, about 14 years here, the same same style of football, uh, same clubs. So at the end, you you get to know them uh, too too much, I guess. Yeah. So for me, it was a good. Uh, it was sort of a relief, a relief that you uh, could could play in another le league, and uh, yeah, the, I think the the tempo was much more higher. The mm. It was more physically. Uh, I think the 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 bigger teams, the better teams, they played also nice football from the back. I think we played a little bit uh, kick and rush, yeah. so half half kick and rush, half uh, try to build up. What you mean in Holland? You did no at City. At City, yeah. I think uh, when Tarnat got the ball, we played just. Normal fo yeah. football from the back. When Danny Mills got the ball, he just Launch. smashed it uh, <laughs> the other <laughs> the other side of the pitch. So no, but that was a little bit for me. It was different because at midfield you only saw the balls going high in the air. And it was a different game for me, so I had to get settled uh, for a while in yeah. the beginning. I think most European European and foreign players, when they do come to the Premier League, it does take a while for them to get used to the pace and the. I can remember David Silver when he first came, he was like an unbelievable player. But he struggled in the first few weeks and the first few games until he got used to the pace and the yeah. physical aspects. But you were always a physical player anyway, so I would probably assume that you adapted quicker than, than most other players. Yeah, I don't have, I don't have problems with physical games, but, but uh, at the other end, I I love to play, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, especially, uh, yeah, from the back and uh, yeah. get involved in the game and not in in the second uh, part or you know the, the, f the dropping balls to pick them up yeah you know. we play a lot from the back now it's there's yeah I mean, there's, there's some it great it players. improved and i think it's also a, a benefit when you when you're younger and mm. you now I, I came there i was 32 so it was a strange move yeah to be fair and uh and you're late when you're younger you pick up easier and uh, you don't have the 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 past the baggage the the baggage from 14 years playing one style you know yeah and totally a different style you have to get used to it mm. but uh can i just read you that the squad when you came in 2003 under kevin keegan that i was looking at the squad the other day it was like david seaman david samay sylvan distan sunji high trevor sinclair sean wright phillips john macken danny teato robbie fowler nicholas and elka al berkovic paolo Wanchot, claudio reyna steve mcmanaman richard dunn darren Huckabee. Antoine Sibierski, Joy Barton, Michael Tarnat. I mean, it, it was a great squad at the time. And, and obviously, yeah, you, you played in the first game at the Etihad Stadium against uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. Anelka, who will become the first ever scorer at the City of Manchester Stadium. I remember it was, uh, it was a good timing to go, to come over there mm. because they just got the new stadium and it was amazing uh, setup, I guess. And uh, yeah, it was a great squad. I think uh, Keegan couldn't complain about the budget. So sure. The only thing was, in my opinion, that he swapped so so much with the team. You never got a little a sort of. Uh, you know, uh, get used to each other and have a sort of uh, recognizable uh, system. Now he swapped to get everybody, keep everybody satisfied. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it's hard. And uh, for me, it was also hard to uh, to judge with that because I was used to playing every be a regular 14 mm. years long. Of so course, for me, it was also a struggle in in the, in the beginning. Thinking of. Other memorable games at that time. I, the one that stands out for me was the um, the fourth round game at 
White Hart Lane against Tottenham. 3 0 down at half time. At the time, I was in the, the dressing room at half time and I didn't even know Joey Barton had sent off, had been sent off, and I, all the players came in and I can just remember seeing Kevin Keegan just sat down in the corner like shell shocked. And, and I think Arthur took over at half time, didn't he? And he did the, the team to help. But it was an incredible turnaround of events. Yeah, yeah. What are your memories of that? I, I remember when I walked uh, off the pitch together with Joey. Joey was a little bit in my back and uh, you could expect uh, every, everything with him. So mm. he was complaining <laughs> still. And uh, I thought there was, there was nothing to complain about when you were 3-0 ahead. So, But uh, at the end, he got his second yellow. And in the dressing room, King was trying to, you know, let, let's you know, uh, sh show a bit of character and try to uh, you know uh, s save some of your skin, and uh, and then at that time Joey said, uh, I have <laughs> I have had a red card, so <laughs> then the, the whole story you know collapsed. So at the end, you know, we I think they they dropped a little bit of uh, the thinking they mod it. Yeah, they think they, they had it in the, in the pocket, and, uh, and we had something. Okay, we, let's try to get back in the game, and then the three-one, and the, then you feel a little bit. Uh, they still mm. are a little bit uh, asleep, and we. Uh, and, and you we got a wonder goal, didn't you? <laughs> it was fuck the worst goal ever, but you know, <laughs> yeah. at the end, you know, it, it counted, and it was uh, necessarily to uh, to beat them. But uh, yeah, it was a strange ga game, a weird game. It was. It was the most. That's the most. People still talk about it now. One of probably the most remarkable comebacks in FA Cup history. Uh, any stage of the competition, it was just yeah. remarkable. Before '96, what was people in the? You have in the man of the match. Award at an away game. Yeah, I was surprised too because in Holland it's not. Uh, it's, yeah, you, you, it's very rare to uh, be a man of the match when you play away. It's very rare at Manchester United for a Manchester City to play together. Yeah, that's what I thought also. But it must be acid. Eh? That's why I didn't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, may, maybe you can try. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No, you don't want to open that, that's well, a collector's item. Will explode. So um, how many derbies did you play in while you were at City? I played one uh, over there, it was the United, yeah. nil nil game. Yeah. And uh, at home it was 4-1. Uh, I, I came in uh, at half time, I guess. Right. What, we won 4-1? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So after you left City, you went to Herenveen, where, where you finished playing, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Did you have a couple of seasons there before you hung your clogs up? or T Two. Two. I, I finished when I was 37. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I could, could go on, but I, at that time I was a little bit uh, done with the, all the, the, your schedule the whole week, you know? Always busy with football. Everything's built around football. and. Uh, I, I, I was, I think, ready for some uh, uh, spare time for myself. My, this is my first year in my own team. Uh, before I did under 19 as an assistant, two mm -hmm. years. Before that I was an assistant at uh, Go with Eagles, first team. The second division at that time. Yeah. So uh, yeah, after after I retired, I just did nothing for a few months. And then uh, I got a little bit bored, and I joined my agent uh, for a few months. But that was not really my my thing. So at the end, uh, I started training with Go with Eagles, mm -hmm. where some uh, f former teammates from from me were joining the club, and they asked me to to join them uh, uh, to join the first team f with training. I did that to, uh, yeah, to just being busy and uh, training at a nice level. And at, uh, at the other end, I could teach some uh, young kids maybe some things, you know, get, give them some tips. Or and uh, that combination uh, finally uh, resulted in uh, being assistant. They asked me to be uh, assistant. I started the, uh, the training course, and uh, so I, I rolled into it. Good. And you enjoying that? You'll get a lot yeah. of job satisfaction you from that because you'll be a good teacher for the kids. 
not just on the football, but for life in general, I would suspect. Yes, I don't know. It's, 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 I'm sure you will be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got a you've got a beautiful family now, and yeah, that's true. That's true. Are you, are you still into like audio slave and entwine and still is heavy metal still? Are you? Yeah, yeah, still, still heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that doesn't change. I still go to uh, concerts. Uh, and, uh, Do you get many of the bands over here? Festivals, yeah, there's a, a little uh, setup over here. Not as big as the MEN uh, arena, but yeah. uh, similar. Very small, but a uh, good setup and a good, uh, good place for a small drink and a uh, good uh, music session.